the power Brian. good evening good sir how are you yeah you know one thing i think about all the time so i just saw your tweet regarding the um the garrett nussmeyer throw that preston brought up here's the thing all right so uh, the, the weirdest thing about that play was joe fouché was the one who almost made the play <laughs> that that's the wildest thing and then it was two a year years later yeah, yeah, it was still so wild that he joined uh, LSU. Was it a year later or was it two years later? Um, well, that would have been, what, 2022, 2021, right? Yeah, it was in 2021. And then, yeah, so one year later, you're all right. Yeah, 2021. Because uh, remember, yeah. they pulled Max Johnson and Orgeron was blaming Max. He had a torn labrum. And it was so, so crazy about that is is Max Johnson threw the game winning touchdown against Texas A&M. He transfers to, uh, right. the, you know, Orgeron runs off, whatever. Uh, look about this thing with Preston. In case you guys missed it, Preston said that the throw that Garrett Nussmeyer made, where he broke the tackle, rolled out left, threw it to Jack Besh in the back of the end zone, was the best throw that he had seen since Joe Burrow, uh, the Joe Burrow days. Are you are you kidding me? Yeah, so it's so subjective, like best throw, right? Because if you say you, if you say the best throw, then like everyone's gonna say it was Marcus Randall, right? Uh, the bluegrass miracle. Uh, that's like the well, the, he's the, saying the, since Burrow was here, which yeah, right. But but my point is, I understand Preston's point that it's not necessarily who the best quarterback is that that's going to make well he had to come back and out but he had to come back and say look this isn't a slight on Jane Daniels the army throw to BTJ when he's breaking tackles and then roll, scrambling out right and throws it on a dime you know the uh multiple touchdown passes like I I, I think of the you know what's a bigger pass breaking stepping up in the pocket breaking a tackle from Dallas Turner throwing the ball to Kyron Lacey with no time left on the fucking clock and yeah. scoring a touchdown versus Alabama to tie it going into half. Under pressure against that team, a playoff team, is a bigger throw than Rudy Poo Tech, which Arkansas was defensively that year. And look, it's a great play by Nussmeyer. No, no, it's, it's, it's a really good play. It's a really good play, and nobody's – you had a Heisman Trophy winner. Okay, do you want to know what the best Jaden Daniels throw is? And I Was think about Mississippi this. State uh, Malik Neighbors or the no. Alabama. What about the Alabama Malik Neighbors catch? No, no, no. So this, I think about this throw all the time. I think about it all the time because if 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 Chris Hilton makes the catch versus Ole Miss, that is the best throw. Knowing the time, knowing the situation. Knowing the protection broke yeah, down. Chris, yeah, that's it, true. And, and it, it was a really tough catch, and he was interfered with. It could have been caught if he makes that catch. The, the one thing, if if that catch is completed, it shuts every Heisman voter up about the quote unquote Heisman moment. So Jaden would have won the Heisman by even more because that was the number one thing. Jayden yeah, because he certainly it. didn't do it against Florida. Right. And and that was uh, the, sarcasm, kids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that was like what a lot of the stupid Heisman voters kept saying. Well, Jalen Milrow had that big throw versus Auburn. What he did versus Auburn wasn't nearly as impressive what Jaden did versus Ole Miss. And he had a gazillion throws in that game that were just stupendous. But the Ole Miss throw, where the protection broke down, and he had to spin out. Somehow, some way, not force the ball to Malik and BTJ, and then actually find a window. I mean, there were seven people defending in the end zone, and Jaden still uh, made that ball catchable uh, by Chris Hilton. That that is one of the best. Throws. I think about this all the time, though, Blake. Like, for instance, Tom Brady's best throw was broken up by Corey Webster. It was the deep shot to Randy Moss uh, that would have saved the 17-0 and season, right? And it was Corey Webster who made one of the biggest plays in NFL history and never gets credit for it. What about um, the uh, – did you see uh, Preston's response to me, by the way? It was, well, the most, it was the most Donald Trump response of all time. I've watched every pass. 
uh, went to the practices, so broke good. down film, and even asked about his deep ball. Uh, I assure you, no one does their do does their due diligence more than me. Come on, Preston. Come yeah, on. And, and, and look, so so Anthony brings up Flynn to Bird. So last year, I actually started working on a deep dive. I don't what mind is any of those passes, Carter. To the, I don't to, either. I, I'm yeah. just talking about like, listen, the Kyron Lacey pass, the Army pass, every single pass that Jaden Daniels threw against Florida stop the cap. The Malink Neighbors one against Alabama is the most ridiculous throw that you. Oh yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, stop, stop. Okay. So I, I'll I'll say this, and then we'll go to a different topic. So I actually reached out to Matt Flynn and asked him about um, Flynn to Bird, and in perfect Matt Flynn fashion, he doesn't like the attention, you know, being on him. He said the best throw he's ever seen uh, was Jamarcus Russell versus Arizona State. They really do said. Um, th- that's he bet he said that is he best. Carter, that ball was wasn't it 62 yards in the air? Yes, a fourth down on a lot. <laughs> there, there are there are maybe 10 quarterbacks he leaned into that one. Yeah, <laughs> there, there are maybe like three SEC quarterbacks ever who could have actually made that throw because you have to have like transcended arm strength. Because if you actually watch that throw, uh, Blake, that ball is thrown so freaking hard. And the fact, like, it still was going. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to put, like, I just don't understand how a human being could have put that much on a football. Like, it was so freaking ridiculous. At the end of a fourth quarter he game where he got I destroyed, know. he's tired. I mean, I that, Jay Russ was one of freaking one uh, when it comes to arm strength. And, Flynn Flynn said uh, to me on Twitter, he said, that's the best throw he has ever seen live. So uh, I could go – someone mentioned Skylar Green from uh, Matt Mock. That was a great throw, obviously, at the end of the Georgia game. But, man, and obviously Burrow. There's well, a good I, I, the best pass – I'm just going to be honest. The, the Kyron Lacey pass will live in infamy for me. Yeah, at the end of the end of the second quarter versus Alabama. Yeah, at the end of the second quarter, getting popped, running away, throwing that as hard as he did over the middle against Caleb Downs. By the way, is going to be a top five pick when he comes out, and then not this year, but the year after his draft. So, I, I get what Preston's saying. I'm not saying he's wrong. Like you mentioned in the beginning, it's objective, right? Like it's purely objective. To or say subjective. Or, it's subjective. Or, or, uh, you're right. You're right. Keep going. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't, you know, and it goes back to the point where I just like, I don't know why even make that comment when like even the Mississippi state game, the fades, the inside fades, I would even say that the, the throw to Mason Taylor against Alabama and the back of the end zone was better. I will also say, and obviously Dane goes Tommy Hodson to Daddy Fuller. And Dane, I appreciate you super chatting. I expect another super chat to fly in for Blake while I'm on here. <laughs> I would like I would like to see some more of those. That's good stuff, Dane. Um, I don't even know if that's be- the Gary Nussmeyer's best throw. I mean, there no, was some. The, 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 Gary Nussmeyer's best throw was against a first-round corner and safety against Georgia in the SEC championship game. It's not co- even Garrett's best throw. Yeah, the, the whole the cover two whole shot. The cover um, two hole shot to Malik is his best throw. Like, I yeah. what he, I think what Preston is trying to say is is when he breaks this, the 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 tackle and he's scrambling. The broken tackle is what's getting him. That's not right. what. That's not you know. Anyway, all right. Yeah. Very quickly because we got a lot of football stuff we got to get yeah. into here. Um, Palmineri, South Carolina. Wow. Yeah. I, I I was re- really blown away by that. I would not have, have made that move. Now, Blake, as you know, I have done radio in South Carolina for about like two and a half, three years, okay? And their fans are some of the best SEC fans in the world. I, I'm serious. Some of the best college fans in the world. Because they, they are so- toxic on Twitter. They got a good fan base? Yeah, they do. I know you're friends with the guy from Unfiltered SEC. Yeah, Chris Chris Phillips. And, and, yep. and, he, and he's a South Carolina guy. Uh, and he, you'll, you'll tell, dude, Gamecock Nation, they, they are great. 
Um, and look, I, I'm very happy with all the success that they've had and to go along with Don Staley and um, you, you get one of the best press conference coaches in the world. Paul is a great speaker. He's going to excite a lot of people. I think their last coach wasn't the most affable guy. And I think that's part of it. Yeah. Kingston was kind of an asshole. Right. So part of it is Paul uh, shake names, kiss babies, raise money. That is who you want. I just don't know. And how freaking competitive the SEC is now. How hard as hell it is to recruit these players now. Do you really want to have someone get right back into the heat of it? I just don't know if it's a good fit. And I it and, and like we discussed earlier, it and and Paul is a way better coach than this guy, but it does feel miles ish to Kansas. It 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 Oh, it, I said it, the same thing. Yes, if it, it does feel like and you and I discussed it earlier. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm always gonna root for Paul because he brought a natty to LSU. Anyone that does that, I'm I'm always gonna be a fan of yours. But man, I I would not have gone in this direction. Then again, I am not the college baseball guy. That is well, you. I that do is Aaron think, Fitz. That's not well, me. I do oh, think oh, that oh, there look, he I think what happened too was he didn't recruit like himself. He he gave that over to uh, Nolan Kane. He wasn't the best recruiter, you know. He he delegated that. Now I do think t- he could delegate it again with Terry Rooney, who's a good recruiter. But I just he's not going to be out there like Jay Johnson hitting the portal like that. I I yeah. really don't think that he will. I don't think that he'd fly to go see guys like if a guy's at home and he you know the guy hits the portal. I don't think Paul's going to go and do that. So it's interesting, Carter, to see what he does in the NIL and portal world. You know, he is a 66-year-old man. And and look, I'm just going to be honest. I don't mean this in a wrong way to any of our older listeners that's in here. Older people tend to hate the portal. Even though, even though <laughs> LSU might have benefited the most out of all the sports in the world from the transfer portal, I, I just, you know... I don't know if Paul is going to do that. That would be – look, you you can't – I mean, you can buy, but Carter, he's got 1,501 wins. Yeah, like, yeah. it's the sixth most in, in college baseball's history. Like, that is insane. You, you're not going to outsmart Paul when it comes to, like, baseball knowledge. Oh, right? Yeah. Like, it's just not going to happen. But – I don't if if you told me right now, like if you told me to tier the SEC head coaches right now, I don't know if he's in your top eight. Right. Okay. And look, I the the age difference is is massive here, but like it would it would be kind of like LSU going to hire Jim Beheim to be your basketball coach, right? Do you really want someone who is wildly successful, Hall of Famer? who is older, do you think they're really going to come back in and embrace the way things are now compared to when Paul left the game? No, I, I just, I just don't know if it, once again, I am not a South Carolina fan and I want, I, I want Paul to do well. I just would not have gone in that direction. And Dane dropped another uh, super. And like I said, it just feels like that. Like I, once again, I, I would never, and I told you this earlier, uh, Blake, why I wouldn't do it. Yeah. As a person, it's not, I- I do exactly. think it's a bit of a stretch. Let me let me say this about Maneri, comparing Maneri to Les. Maneri won 641 games at LSU. He got the five College World Series. That'd be like getting the five playoffs this year, you know, like in this in today's day and age. In 15 oh, seasons, right. four of those seasons are 50 wins. He did win a natty. I just think that people compare it as that he won one national championship and then lost another, right? Like that no. – that that's what they compare it to, but we can't we can't bypass that after that 2017 season that things went more downhill, right? Like you can't you can't say that they didn't because they did. He didn't. I think he had one other 40 win team, and, and that's not or maybe two, but that's not that's not, look. There's a reason he retired. There's a reason he was pushed out. And Carter, I got to be honest. I think everything that he said about LSU since he retired is bullshit. Like, and I know that former players are going to rip me alive. They continue to do it to me on Twitter. Guys, it's bullshit. Paul Maneri wants to be a head coach, whether it's at LSU, South Carolina. It didn't, this place mattered to him. 
but he wanted to be a head coach. When he said, you know, like when he said the other uh, two weeks ago, this is the best college baseball place in the in the country. Does he truly believe that? Because I don't think that he does. And I don't think that him and Jay had the best of relationships either. I mean, Jay oh, is wow. constantly with, with Skip. I mean, he's talking about Skip. When's the last time you heard Jay talk about Paul Maneri? And another thing. And during the Florida series, Paul was up in the booth and said, you know, a majority of those players that were on that roster were my players that I recruited. Okay, Paul. Well, then you fumbled the bag then because Kay Beloso wasn't doing that good under you. Neither was uh, uh, Gavin Duga. There were so many guys that didn't have success under you that when Jay came in, they had more success. What's your story about that now? I'm not trying to be petty towards Paul. But let's not act as if that Jay didn't come in here and, and really do some really good things, too. Yeah. What happened? To, so Ray Tanner just became an AD, right? He just. Yeah. He was the former head baseball coach there. And look, is a, is a, friends with Paul. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. That's why I, I was wondering if Ray had a good relationship with Paul. And I, I would guess that he did. Once again, it it's I, I'm not smart enough on college baseball to break down the intricacies. I I just don't know if I would have hired an older coach who's been out of it to get into the portal and fly all around the country and and grind. But if he's willing to do it, then more power to him, man. To him, but man. I it, it, is is he going to want to grind? I think is the ultimate question. Right. Uh, it's not the only big news that. And thank you, Dame, for the super chat there. I don't think it's the the big the big news that left LSU Tiger fans shocked this week. Maybe it was Camp Johnson that hit the portal, but uh, John Emery returns. Now, you and I, Carter, have spoke about does LSU need another running back? I'm going to leave this open-ended to you. Uh, yeah. I have my thoughts and opinions. I have not spoke on it yet, but I want to get your thoughts on John Emery returning to LSU. Yeah, it's a good thing because he is a running back, and he does add depth to the room, and he knows the offense, right? So all those things are really, really freaking good, and they need they just needed another body in the room who we know is is good. I think also, Blake, it's important to point out like who John Emery is, right, as a player. Right. When he's been fully healthy, all right? Um, Fumble I understand. prone, not hitting the right holes. Yeah, and and early in his career, some major pass protection issues, um, right. and and all that aside, uh, I am not sure uh, he's a tr- let's say Jacoby Stevens, for instance, right? He was a five star recruit who was probably more of a four star producer at LSU, a very very solid player, but not the true five star. It was Grant Delpit who was a true five star in that class, right? I think the same thing applies here. When John has actually played Blake, I don't know if I could say I've ever seen him and said, wow, this guy is truly special. Like he is truly unfreaking believably good. Now he's had some special plays, but I don't know if I would consider him to, to be transcendent, if you will, or just very, very good as like a five-star level producer when he's been healthy, when he's been around. So I, I want people to, to understand from my vantage point, I still think it's a Caleb Jackson show. I still think it's a Josh Williams show. And at this time, especially considering John is coming off a very visceral injury, I would think Caden Durham is going to outproduce him next year. But the fact that he is a warm body who knows the offense, entering the prime of his athletic career, a a year six guy, um, I think it's a really, really good thing that LSU was able to add another body who's, who's going to give them something. All right, if I just go bye bye for a minute, it's absolutely pouring here. So just stay with me, Carter. Don't don't yeah, don't. I'll, leave I'll, me. Okay. I'll, I'll go by myself. It doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, here are my thoughts about John Emery here. Um, I'm going to say this, but I I want to be careful on how I say it, and the words that I use might be wrong. I think they mismanaged the depth. I think what has happened here, okay, is Trey Holly's the DA in the Trey Holly case recused himself. So did the judge, which then pushed back the court case. You know, Brian Kelly said, Carter, that he thought that the Trey Holly case would be done by mid-April. 
Well, I mean, we're 10 days into June, so yeah. I, he doesn't have another court case or, 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 or they're getting the continuance until I think it's June 28th. Okay. Which is a Friday. I, I, I I don't know where that's going. What I think happened is, is that they thought that he might not come back and they just wanted John to come back to add for depth. And I got to be honest with you. He tore his ACL on November 11th against Florida. And I asked the question, like, unless he's Adrian Peterson and can return in eight months, he's not going to be ready for camp. Where is his rehab? And those are questions that we don't have at the current moment. Right. I also don't buy this notion that's been floated out there idiotically. Oh, well, this is the first time that John Emery is going to be running behind an elite offensive line. Are we idiots? Like, it's the same old line besides the center. Like, what are we What are we really discussing with that? Right. And, and Blake, he, he's gotten beat now. You know, like. Yeah, he's gotten beat now. Carter, he, yeah. if he wouldn't be hurt, here's the truth. He would be in front of Caden Durham week one. Okay, probably mainly due to the fact that he knows the playbook and he's a six-year senior. By yeah. week two, it would be over for John. Yeah, if Kanan Durham is is good between the years and picks up the playbook, I, he's so good. Like I, I, I have been so careful by not overhyping him, and there are some concerns with me with his running style not being the absolute biggest guy. Uh, a lot of my viewers know I love thickness, but I mean he's well built for his size. Caden is like a true home run hitting back, like a guy mm -hmm. that is 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 very – Break worried. a tackle and take it 90. Right. Like he is truly, truly, truly spectacular. And you can make a case that he is the most productive if you just – if you were just basing it on what these guys did in their high school careers, <laughs> he, he is the most productive since Fournette. Like the most – like an actual high school football versus elite Texas competition, he dominated. Now, was he around other five stars? Yes. Was he around uh, Reginald? Well, Sanders? he didn't have a five, all five star offensive line. I mean, he didn't have. I mean, right. But right. he had great. He had great coach. Sep Samples is one of the best coaches in Texas, and yeah, he had all that. But he was dominant, like two hundred yards a game, dominant. Biggest spots in the in, in the season, dominant. Versus DeSoto, state championship games, dominant. Like it's that's really hard to do, right. and I, I I just think he's very good, and he's going to really propel LSU forward. Uh, but I, I'm with you on, on the John thing. I, I'm skeptical about the situation uh, he's in right now, and the, the, look. TDP, who was in the same recruiting class, is about to enter year three in the NFL. How nuts is that? Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's it's absolutely well. Positive. And there's this wow. notion out there too, Carter, that oh well, you know, I saw something this week. We were speaking about Preston earlier. Oh well, these guys didn't miss. Well, they certainly missed with John Emery. You know, because he was a five star guy. I mean, and, and look, I'm not trying to come out here and poo poo on John, but I think we need to get realistic to what actually has happened here. Now, when I say they mismanaged the depth, that doesn't mean they mismanaged the position. Okay, look, you got three dudes that can play. Okay, like let's not let's not mistake that that Caleb Jackson, Caden Durham, and Josh Williams can play here. Okay, like that is one hundred percent something that we know. What I do think is interesting here, though, is why now? Okay, and the question now becomes, what does this mean for Trey Holly? And uh, Carter, I, I'm just going to be real with you. I, I I know that the young man doesn't want to rat out anybody. He doesn't want to be a rat or what he perceives to be a rat, okay? Look, if you didn't do something, you got to tell people, okay? And I think that that is, look, you, you remember the old Bernie Mac thing when he said, the old Bernie Mac skit, when he was like, he starts jumping up and down, you know, and he said, you can call me a rat all you want, but if I'm not going to jail for you, because he was talking about the, you know, doing stand-up in a prison, and he right. goes, I'm jumping and, and pointing at you that you did it. I ain't going to jail for you. I, I want him to do that because if if you're if you, now they dropped the murder charge, okay, and we've talked about this a lot. I just caught. I don't know if I have a lot of faith that he's here in August. I pray to God he is. But look, you had a head coach that was saying that they were told that this was supposed to be done in April, and it's not. So, what it seems to me, 
Okay. Now, look, I do have a legal background, and that's fine. But what it this, and this could be wrong. But what it feels on the surface without not knowing any other information, it feels like you're going to get another DA from another district that's going to want to prove a point. That they can go in and, and to another district and go into another judicial system and prove that they can come and get this kid. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I I just think Trey is is, is being told to, to, to stay quiet. And I, I won't comment on the legal thing. Obviously, you have a legal background. Um Man, as far as just the football is concerned, he he actually played a lot better as a true freshman last year than I thought. I, I thought he was purely going to be a year two guy because of you know some athleticism concerns and 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 whatnot. And the step up from the competition he was in, he also obviously was extremely dominant. But it you know it, the level is just completely different than someone that Caden Durham was going up against. Um, man, Blake, he really did some good things last year. Um, he could have been the Terrence McGee of this room, right? Just a guy who can go out there and, and, and get the job done if you absolutely. I think need he's him more here. athletic than. Ter- I, I think he's more expo- not athletic because Terrence could have been a baseball player. And nobody would have. I mean, the kid was throwing 91, 92 as a lefty off the mound. You remember when Les Miles tried to throw, make him throw a pass in the game? His most telegraphed thing ever. Um, he's more explosive than Terrence, but I agree. I think that's a good comp. He could have been a glue yeah. guy. You know, like, uh, and you know, Terrence, remember that opening game against TCU? Ran had a big yeah. run for a touchdown. So, yeah, look, I, I agree with that. Let me let me ask you this too, and we'll, and then we'll get to some other things football related. Do you think that the depth was mismanaged? The depth, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I, like I there were a lot of portal running backs, and yeah. I'm yeah. not saying to cut Trey Holly loose. I'm not telling anybody to cut any Louisiana kid loose. What I'm saying is, you weren't going to go get five. You were already three guys over the over the limit. You were at 88 scholarship players. Well, Carter, you let seven dudes walk. Uh, okay, and so <sighs> did you really think that you were going to get four DTs in here? Blake, I'll be honest. I think there would have been some portal running backs very interested to join this room, um, knowing what the depth chart looked like. I mean, I think – Miss got 27 of them. I, Ole Miss I, legitimately, I, Carter got four transfer portal running backs. I I think the vision could have easily been sold to a lot of running backs. Hey, this is the best offensive line we've had. Hey, uh, we're going to run the football more next year, and we've got three scholarship warm bodies that we know for sure that'll be in our room next year. I I think that could have been an easy sell. Um, but and Frank's track record of rotating backs. And and developing them as well, right? I I I, I was I was very 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 shocked. Uh, but like you said, Blake, the focus was mostly on the defense, right? They were so focused in on just getting as much defensive help as they possibly could. I would have gotten another back, uh, but I would have too. And I, I wasn't injured. Yeah, look that that's the thing, man. You, uh, you, you know, with the, I, I wish. The, the the perfect back would have been Kane coming back for an extra year. That would have been the perfect, perfect LSU back because he was really good when he actually got the football. He just wasn't spectacular. Um, but he, he's not he's not How available. How crazy was it that he led the team in rushing touchdowns in 22 and then didn't have but one last year? Yeah, led the team in rushing touchdowns and had the best success rate uh, of, of all his LSU running backs that year. <laughs> He just ran into a lot of bad luck with the, you know, eight players in the depth chart and not being, you know, a home run hitter. But he was really good when he actually got the football. And I understand the whole Harlem Berry, TJ Lindsay thing. You're bringing in a pair of backs next yeah. year. I understand Caden Durham. But the problem is, and like we mentioned, you're a running back away, injury away from being in a little bit of a pickle. Um, Carter, let me transition here to a little bit of recruiting. Did you see this from Texas? Uh, 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 Texas media has been reporting over the last week. The big thing, the big scuttlebutt at Texas this this past week has been how bad they've been recruiting high school wise on the defensive line. Where LSU has started to trend, and some of the for some of the prospects on the defensive line that Texas thought that they would. Uh, have you noticed? Something different here. Now, I know that you got Gabe Rutherford. I know that you got Don McKinley. 
But Carter, the quantity of guys that I think they're about to get under Bo Davis is better than under the Brian Kelly regime than we've ever had. Yeah, I I, I was on your last week talking about Brandon, Brandon Brown. Brown. Right. I, I like I like Brandon Brown a lot. Well, he the is. Savior, uh, 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 Yukapanu. I say that last name. I I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. K P O N U. I can't say his last name either. He's another kid that I think Celine, I, I the Shanklin kid. I yeah. mean, Carter, are you starting to get to a place a little bit here where, I mean, are you recruiting at a, I mean, are, are we getting better here on the defensive line in high school recruiting? I, I hope so, man. Um, yeah, I actually went back and, and rewatched your Brandon Brown set because this tape is fun. There's some guys that have tape where you just laugh, and he was definitely one of those guys. Whit Weeks had that kind of tape when I watched him. I was like, dude, this guy is – Freaking incredible. I don't know how good the competition is. It wasn't all that great on Whit Weeks' uh, tape, but he, damn, he's, he's he was he made me laugh. Brandon Brown did that uh, a lot. Uh, I really like watching him play. Um, the, the Zion Williams guy is 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 interesting unless he's committed oh, yeah, to the world. Yeah, but yeah, I'm really excited what, what he's doing. Obviously, Bo and uh, yeah, Texas, They one thing they do have, though, is they have Lamborghini, and they got Lamborghinis lined up for when you walk in. Did you, know, you hear that they're renting those for five hundred dollars a day? Yeah, I, I like no, those aren't purchased Lamborghinis. Those are rented Lamborghinis. Yeah, and I, I'll be honest. <laughs> as far as that is concerned, okay, the kids like it, whether or not people want to admit it. The kids like the cheesy stuff. They just do. The Lamborghini thing, though, would turn me off as a parent, right? Because you're older. That bullshit is just not. They they know it's optics. Don't older, decorate the hotel rooms, though. Yeah, don't do that. No, do that. Don't don't. They'll they'll destroy you over that now. But if I was a parent and I saw that, I'd be like, come on, for real, for real. I I I. And I don't want my let you drive one. Well, as a parent, if I was allowed to drive it, I would be a little bit different. But <laughs> I don't know if I want my kid driving uh that, knowing um uh, knowing how, you, you want your kid in like a palisade. For right. Safety. I'm telling you this, as you know, Blake, and we had this debate on my channel um a while ago. I I really liked Anthony and Richardson going into the NFL. I really did. And the main thing that I loved from him was that, do, do you know the story? He got arrested for going 100 on a freeway, all right, and like a, a Hellcat uh, that was leased him as a part of an NIL deal. All right? I, didn't, I didn't know that. Okay, so he got, he got it is a, a, the story's not talked about enough. And he then had the presence of mind to go to the NIL deal in, in the deal, and then he immediately went and bought a Toyota Camry. <laughs> and, I was like, and I was like, that is the leadership and presence I want out of my quarterback. <laughs> like that is, uh, and I don't, I don't know if I got all the details correct there, but I was like, that is some impressive decision making. Do you know how hard it was for him to turn that thing back in and be like, uh, let me, let me go, let me go get a Corolla. Let me, let me, let me go get some, uh, I, no, do you think that uh, Anthony Richardson went up there and was like, that Nissan Ultima is hitting? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that Nissan Ultimate with the push button is hitting. Oh, God. Uh, Danny Girl in the comments says, rented Lambos are better than corny su supper club signings. Or singing. Or singing, excuse me. Yeah. I, 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 well, well here, here's my thing. For me, yeah, it's not. You know how? Do you, you know what you got to go and do to get a rented Lambo, though? It's a lot of work. You got to go to the guys, make somebody's sure got to drive it there, right? I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Um, another thing about recruiting, uh, your what's your feel on DK Moore? If you have one, I don't. I, I've kind of just, I don't know about you, like. One of my favorite moments was the day you called me before driving to Dallas and you were going to do the whole thing. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, I, I oh, didn't tell a soul. I knew for. Yeah. You called me. Days. Like, I'm doing this. Yeah. So. Um, 
so you called me. I was like, man, I hope you have plugged in internet. Cause, and, and I know you've told that story plenty of times, but I, I really hope he, he picks LSU because he is special. Like I, I've watched him, I've evaluated him. He's, he's so freaking good. With that said, all right, I don't know how he's feeling uh, about LSU. Obviously, a lot has changed. He met with Jamar Chase. Everyone said the visit went well. I, I really don't pay attention to that because all visits go well, especially if you're a five-star receiver, mm-hmm. as transcendently good as he is. I would also say that every great wide receiver LSU has missed on another one has spawned up from the ashes. And it has been like that for forever. Losing Jermaine Burton didn't hurt, ultimately. Losing Joe Doro was the biggest... Devonta Smith didn't hurt, but he still won a Heisman. Yes, yes. I, I mean, so, but right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, it, it's, it stings if, if you don't end up getting him in the LSU spending so many resources and time to, to, to get this kid because he is really good. Um and you, you want to keep that Duncanville thing going. And you want Bryce Underwood, who DeCorian Moore knows pretty well, uh, to have that connection and, and feel comfortable with someone like that around him. But, like, L- LSU has always been fine at, at receiver. Now, if he was an offensive tackle, I would be uh, in shambles uh, right now. But, you know, at this point, I, I'm not panicking just yet. And, Blake, I'll tell you this. When I first watched, uh, and I always said Jamie French, it's Jaime French. I had the I and the M mixed up. I've always said Jamie French. I watched I watched him this weekend doing some seven on seven stuff. He's grown on me. Uh, you don't have to feel about Khalid Clockett. I don't know how well of a chance we really have with him. There's some other guys that, that I'm I'm very interested in this class of wide receiver. And obviously Teron Francis is a pretty solid athletically built wide receiver from Louisiana. And most of LSU's best receivers are from Louisiana. The last out-of-state wide receiver to catch over 40 passes at LSU has been Terrence Tolliver. Um, so right. so L- LSU will be fine at wide receiver regardless, but DeCorey Moore makes them that much better. Um, why, am I, why am I forgetting something big that happened in the SEC? Why am I, for, why am I forgetting something big that's happened? Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on. Uh, I don't when you when you stare oh. into, now go, go did you see this thing about uh, now they want to go to nine conference games in the SEC did no, we, I, didn't. Yeah, well, I think we talked about that didn't we no I know I I, I I this is the best news ever for me like go can for I, it can I give can I give a counteraction yeah go on ahead I'm not saying I agree with this but can I let me give a counteraction did you see ESPN's top top ten toughest schedules in the con- in the country? Per the FPI? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. All, all right, it was ten SEC sc- or nine SEC schools in Georgia Tech, who's got to play Miami, Florida State, and Georgia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With that being said, I don't think it's. I I, I got to be real with you. I don't think it it's created equally. I, I think the SEC playing eight conference games is not created equally to other conferences. If you add not think think about this, let's just say hypothetically that Florida had Oklahoma added to their schedule. No, that I, I, Blake, I will tell you this. The data overwhelmingly shows that you're correct, all right? So I, I think some of you are familiar with Dave Bartu, who studies this, and Dave is a really good friend of mine, and he's um, a college football consultant for a lot of teams. And he and I, he is the brightest college football mind I've ever met. He and I have gotten into the most intense debates, and I've call, I call Dave a, a friend of mine. He is the biggest proponent of the SEC staying at eight games. I, I think I lean there too, if I'm being honest. Yeah. And and guess what? Guess what? You as an LSU fan, you should want that too. Now, this is a debate. And Blake, as you know, schedule format is the thing I am the most passionate about over uh, anything, yep. else. anything else. In in sports, it is the single most important thing in every single sports league is how you format how you determine champions, how you determine your leagues and all of that. So I will tell you LSU's position on this, Blake, is they want nine. nine. 
Yes, and there has not been a single team in the SEC based on public uh, uh, you know, remarks and what I've also heard privately uh, that, that won nine games. Uh, Scott Woodward, last year, SEC meetings in Destin, told Paul Feinbaum, I want nine conference games. Ryan Kelly is very competitive. He wants nine conference games. It helps the SEC if they stay at eight. It helps the SEC because in college football, Blake, the most important thing to do is not win games. It it's helps not- me financially. Yes, nine games helps you. The most important thing in college football, people get this wrong all the time. It's not winning games. It's avoiding losses. That is the single most important thing. All right. When last year I did a deep dive on Kentucky, I learned through speaking to uh, people in the SEC and listening to press conferences, the one single person that is the biggest proponent for an eight-game conference schedule is Kentucky. All right. And then LSU is on the other end of it. They want nine. What Mitch Barnhart, the athletic director at Kentucky, says is if you add an extra conference game, you are adding eight more losses to an SEC schedule every year. And he's right, because if you play each other, you're Somebody's adding- got to lose, right. Someone's got to lose in that head-to-head. And I hear that. This would be my retort, is that outside of your LSU fandom, and if you're an Arkansas fan, if you're a South Carolina fan, if you're a Kentucky fan, you want to stay at eight. You do not want nine, especially if you're a bottom-tier team. Nine is a death sentence if you're um, Missouri, if if you will. Uh, they, they might think they're great, but they're not in the upper tier. And they are great for right now, but they're not in the upper tier. The thing, though, Blake, and this is why it's so important, is the neutral college football viewer benefits from a nine-game conference schedule. So taking out your fandom, you get an extra game of value added to your schedule. You get an extra high leverage situation added to your schedule. And that to me is important because I'm a huge college football fan. I don't hate that. That's the the thing that I like about it the most. Right. The the issue with that is, is not the SEC's, not that I don't want more high leverage games. Right. It's the fact of that other conferences aren't created equally. Let me give an example. There's a very strong chance that Kansas State at 10 and 2 this year could be over, let's just say, Georgia loses the SEC championship game again, and they have one loss. Well, they will have a bye week, and Georgia will not, right? Georgia would be a five seed again. I mean, we just saw this play out. That's one of them. Why wasn't any Big Ten team on there? Because, let me tell you, because Michigan plays a schedule. Now, they have high leverage games, too. They only have really four high leverage games, but they also have Northwestern. They have Rudy Poutek. They got Rutgers. It's not created equally. So I understand what you're saying, but how can I look at an eight-game conference schedule and say, well, look, even though they're playing one less conference game, their schedule is actually tougher. For the last five weeks of Florida's schedule, okay, or or five weeks of, yeah, of their Florida schedule, of the last five weeks or four weeks in the middle of Georgia's schedule, I'm going to say five weeks, they like these teams. Okay, even Kentucky. Kentucky was at number four. These teams go through stretches and months through a season, at least a month through a season, that the Big Ten can't replicate. I agree. I, I so agree. But- why is it me as a a fan? I I understand the high leverage situation and a potentially more another home game that I could attend. Okay, well, I'm going to be a home game if I play a G5 program anyway. The the uh, the issue becomes is for me though. Look, y'all aren't y'all aren't up to par with what what's being faced here. Now think about it like this. Josh Pate said this last night, and I agree with him. If you took out Alabama, okay, besides the Big Ten, if you took out Alabama, LSU, and Georgia. The draft picks for all of those conferences are all or the SEC still is bigger than the Big 12, the ACC, and what would have been the Pac 12 of last season. Here's another thing if you took out LSU from last year, the SEC still has more draft picks. Okay. 
I, I just don't I, I I don't understand why people are saying you got to go to nine because everybody else goes to nine. Well, you know what? If little Johnny jumps off a bridge, my fat ass isn't going to follow him. <laughs> okay? uh, yeah. It's not going to happen. Right. Because the national champion last year, as an example, Carter went through six weeks of a cakewalk. No, I, I'm with you, Blake. Where I, and and that that's obviously a, a very good discussion. Like the SEC is is tougher than a Big Ten schedule. I I'm totally with you on that. But all right, the SEC is at 16. All right, uh-huh. there is a potential of even more being added. If you remain at an eight game conference schedule, depending on how you actually structure that schedule, and there's ways that you could structure the schedule where you can get teams rotated through if you boldly go to the one permanent team on your schedule. There is a way to do it. Well, they eight. can't do what Sankey did and just flip-flop it. And right, like what he I, flip-flop home and away for next year, which is lazy as shit. And I think there is a reason he did that. Why? I, I think more teams are coming. And I, I think, think it's Florida State and North Carolina. I <sighs> why build why build an SEC office if you're the SEC network in Charlottesville? Yeah, that, that I what I've heard, Blake, is North Carolina has a really strong chance of being in the SEC within the next three to four years. Now, I am not the big conference realignment guy. This is just what this is what I've heard, but it's it's partially that. And as we all witnessed uh, in the um, regional, not to bring up, you know, tough moments, but North Carolina's got a damn good fan base and they got a big, big, yeah, big, yeah. Big, and, and big overnight brand. they make your basketball conf, you know, basketball in your conference is much bigger than. Yes. You know, I went to a Buffalo Wild Wings in North Carolina. I'll never forget this. It was in the middle of March. March Madness was about to fully take away. And I think it was like the first round. Dude, the Buffalo Wild Wings was packed. <laughs> Dude, it, it was insane. I'm like, this is what a football Friday in Baton Rouge looks like, or football Saturday, excuse me. So, look, to end this, I don't want to keep you long. I've kept you a no, long time no, already. I, this, 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 I, I could talk schedule format all day. My last thing I will say on the nine game thing, though, is if you do expand, Right. Or even if you stay at 16 teams, one thing that has been constantly complained about um, in the SEC, and it is without a doubt an unfreaking believably valid claim, is are you really a conference if you rarely play certain teams? But but hold on. Okay. But hold on. I understand what you just said or or what you're saying. That's not an issue. You know how you know why it's not an issue? It's an issue because Greg Sankey, I'm just going to be honest with you, has been lazy as shit the last three years. Outside of going and getting Texas and Oklahoma and trying to help NIL in the portal with scheduling, with officiating and umpiring, he's been lazy as fuck. Like, let's just be real because there's no reason why Georgia should have not been at, they've never been to Kyle Field since they've been in the conference. Whose yeah, fault is that? Okay, the fault of it is, is it Sankey's? You know what he could have done? Even if they're adding more teams in, I want Texas to be in Baton Rouge. They owe us. And you know what? I'm putting, I am putting the entire Manning family legitimately in the middle of the student section next to the band, and we're (laughs) going to raise money for the band to play neck the entire game, and we're putting Arch, we're putting uh, our Archie, we're putting Peyton, we're putting Eli, we're putting Cooper, okay, we're putting all them some bitches in the middle of the student section for what they did to Joe Burrow's daddy. I have not forgotten about that shit. Well, what they did to Joe Burrow's daddy they, in the nosebleed. Oh, I thought you said that the Mannings did something to no, do. No, but, but, but when they would come here, he would be the starting quarterback. Sorry, Cooper. No, I. first off, I, as you know, Blake, I'm a huge Peyton Manning guy, so I will not allow Peyton slander to – a core. I mean, they I couldn't here. fit his entire forehead in the student section. That dude, you don't, don't, don't get, don't get on Peyton, man. There's a lot of knowledge, man. There's a lot of. I, I mean, uh, uh, a car. 
tell me another man that's got a bigger forehead. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't have a bigger forehead, but we've discussed head size, so I'm not one to talk about head size. Uh, the man's got the biggest forehead. He he looks like Ed the horse. Now I love I love Peyton, but I'm just saying. All right, I, I would look. I do agree that Texas should have been coming to Baton Rouge the first year. Uh, that would have appeased. It would have made me very happy. I don't. Uh, I, there's no reason for us to play Oklahoma. None. Uh. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Uh, but I think Texas is going to be really good. So, and I don't think Oklahoma is going to be as good as them. So, uh, I, I, well, I I'm not scared of them. I'm not either. I, I would have loved to have played them. Uh, my my only thing here is to 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 end this because I need to let you go anyway. To end this, let me just say this: when things aren't created equally, when you go into a playoff, like. Card, there's, I mean, somebody in the ACC is going to come out of this and they're going to have, you know, somebody's going to get a buy. And Carter, we're talking about automatic qualifiers. Like, Carter, there was a very strong chance that North Carolina, uh, uh, NC State could have had an automatic qualifier last year. Like, think about it like this based off of, uh, of power rankings, okay, there could have been a strong possibility because of automatic qualifiers, NC State would have gotten in over LSU. So what? It's conference champions. Conference well, champions, and the ACC gets three. The SEC and Big Ten get four, and the Big Twelve get three. Or and then if they expanded to fourteen, then there's a group of five. You know that's how they're trying to plan. Oh it no, out. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah. The, I thought yeah. it was. So, I mean, the truth con- is, I, I thought it was after conference champions. No, I mean that's what it is this year. That's what it is until 2025. But in 2026. It expands, okay, or it will expand into 14, okay, and then you're going to have automatic qualifiers. Screw screw that on eight, on nine conference games. It doesn't benefit the, the SEC because the money comes in the back end in the playoff. That yeah, extra yeah, $3 right. million dollars you get, well, Fugazi, Fugazi, who gives a Rudy Poo? Get to the playoff. That's why it's going to stay at eight, but – I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, nine, Ross Sellinger yeah. reported it like three weeks ago. Oh, I I have Ross's tweets on alerts. I didn't see it. I guess. Yeah, it was. We talked about it on Rafino and Joe show that that is the pending decision that they're trying to make in twenty twenty six. Yeah, but I've been too busy uh, and cooking buying, your eggs and turkey bacon. That and and I bought a PS five. <gasps> I'm 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 a, I'm a, You ready I'm for the a, college football game? Yeah, you are. Uh, well, you know, part of it, Blake, is I, I'm about to start doing some gaming content, even though I don't know how to do record gaming content because the kids in my neighborhood bug me about it all the time about not doing gaming content. What are you gonna play Fortnite? No, I'm gonna play the soccer game. That's oh. my favorite video all right, game. I got one question that I, I'm gonna let you go. Go ahead. Name a G5 team that you're going to be the head coach of no. and then work your way up to become the next LSU head coach. Uh, I, I want I want to pick Tulane because of the uniforms and all that, but that's too boring. That's too boring. We, we are going to be the Coastal Carolina Chanticleer. I said that last night, too. Yeah, because the nickname is just... Oh, you said it last night? I Job said... I, and they got great uniforms. I, I will, uh, okay, well, then I'll, I'll pick the Idaho Vandals. Or, or I'll, I'll, I'll go Vandal Nation. Isn't what if the I really, Vandals, aren't the Vandals in FCS, though? They moved down okay, to FCS. Okay, that's true. So if I want to become an SEC head coach, even though I would be the coach at Auburn, I'll go be the coach at Arkansas State. Because that's uh, the pipeline to, to, to being an SEC coach. Uh, go be a coach at Arkansas State and win some games for for the yes, Red Wolves. Yes. But um, I, but Blake, it's always fun, man. I appreciate you big time. 